Welcome to Research in Technology Glo uh, uh, Tech 5143. And uh, we are having a special guest today, and he will uh, uh, introduce us to some tools. And the reason why I asked him to come is that today we will start talking about tools in research or tools of research. Now, uh, I want you please to welcome Holden Real for me. And uh, the microphone will be his, and you can ask him any question. He likes to answer questions if you like. All right, uh, how's everybody doing today? Cool. My name is Holden Real. I'm an undergrad here at EIU. Um, I'm going to do what? H O L D E N R E E L. Uh, as I said, I'm an undergraduate here at EIU. I, uh, I work down in the construction lab downstairs uh, for Dr. Tusi. Most of you probably have seen him around or know him. Um, I generally deal with, we're doing a concrete testing uh, right now, which we're adding biomass ash into the concrete to test what kind of physical characteristics and chemical characteristics that it would have. Uh, so we, we sieve the ash add it into the concrete and test it from there on for obvious for our uh, for our study that we're doing um, first off by the way feel free to stop me anytime and ask any questions that I've got or you have so we'll start off with uh, this board here um, this is going to be a general array of fasteners that you will see in the construction industry uh, everything from double headed nails to galvanized nails, the galvanized deck, crew, deck screws, uh, to the blue ones, which are Tapcon screws. Uh, those are generally going to be used for screwing the bottom plate of a wall into concrete. So everything else, galvanized screws and uh, coated deck screws, those are going to be used for waterproof applications such as decks or anything else that you'll be building outside. Uh, another item that I have here today is a representation of a webbed truss. Uh, these right here, these metal plates that hold it on, are, uh, con are they're called gussets. Um, these right here are just going to be uh, uh, struts at a 45 degree angle so they can uh, support and hopefully not spread the web. These are going to mostly be used in a basement type application. Uh, you can run uh, wires, you can run pipes, you can run anything through them. Uh, much more easily than you can with a uh, standard joist construction. This item right here is a crude representation of a standard stick built wall. As you can see over here, we have a, uh, this is called an advanced corner. Uh, this is what you normally, what old contractors would do, is they put three studs there, it would make a corner. And then you could nail the next wall that would go into it right here. So what happens was you'll have a 2 by 4 right here, and it'll make a nice 90-degree corner for you without using any extra studs. So therefore, we save money. Uh, these are going to be 16-inch on center. That's center to center of each stud. And that's going to be standard for most stick-built home applications. There are certain applications where you would use a 24-inch on center and, of course, a 12-inch on center. But uh, generally, we won't do that most of the time. It's, most of the time, it's 16 inch on center. We can start off now with some of our concrete tools. This is going to be a concrete trowel. You will use this to basically smooth out the concrete, finish the concrete. It's a finishing tool. It's, this is a precise instrument, let's put it that way. Uh, I've got a, an assortment of trowels here that, uh, you know, there's all kinds of different sizes and makes and models. And uh, each one you'll find will be easier to use in a certain application. These, for instance, are better for brick, um, CMU, concrete masons, or cement masonry units, and uh, for smaller applications, of course. Uh, this right here is an edger. You will use this to bullnose the edge of concrete. Uh, say on a sidewalk, you wouldn't want to have a sharp edge on the sidewalk. 
for one thing, somebody could obviously get hurt on that. And uh, for two, if you, it, if you don't bullnose the edge of the side of it, it'll uh, be easier to break. So therefore making your concrete that you just spend a bunch of money on look really bad. Which concrete, at the current price right now around here, I believe it's around $80 a yard. So concrete truck holds nine yards. So do the math on that. Okay, moving on to other handheld hand items. Uh, these are going to be screwdrivers, of course. Uh, they call this a regular head or flat head. It's going to be just a flat head, standard. Uh, it's, I believe it was the first type of screwdriver, too, as well. So then they went on to figure out that the more area you have on the head creates a, so you don't strip the screw or anything, and they came out with a Phillips head. Of course, they have other types. Uh, they'll have a uh, Torx bit. Uh, they'll have square head. Um, they'll have combination screws. So the list can go on and on. And uh, I'm going too fast. Don't feel free to stop me. Um, this is a standard tool. It's a little bit of a small one, uh, but it's a crescent wrench. Uh, most of you have probably seen box end wrenches. Um, they're going to look like this, just not adjustable. Crescent wrench is nice whenever you are moving a lot, using a lot of different ones. Uh, you can kind of alleviate having to go get more tools more often. So that's kind of nice. Well, we got a couple items here. These are going to be used uh, a lot in demo construction or destruction, I guess. Um, this is a crowbar. They come in all different shapes and sizes. Uh, I wish I had a flat bar to show you because that would be a, uh, it's a little more practical to use whenever you're uh, doing wall deconstruction. Uh, this is uh, what we call a cat's paw or a nail puller. It's another type of crowbar, a little smaller. It's nice because you, uh, you can hammer that into the screw head or the nail head and be able to pull it out. Makes things nice whenever you get in a, Sticky deconstruction situation. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, these are some electrical tools that you might use uh, during, especially uh, as an electrician or doing any home repair with wires. Uh, these are wire strippers. Uh, they got different gauges on them from uh, 16 to 26 gauge. They go down and up from there. So, this is just kind of a small piece. And this right here is a uh, needle nose pliers. They're nice for whenever, especially if you're doing receptacles or something, you got to curl the end of the, the wire after you strip them and uh, get them around a nut or a bolt or such. Uh, move on to some kind of framing again. Uh, standard chalk line. You're going to fill it up with a powdered chalk. This is create straight lines across maybe a sheet of OSB or plywood. Um, makes everything a lot nicer, especially because it's hard to find a straight edge past two, three, four feet. So this gives you a good clear representation of where the line is that you will be cutting. Here we have a framing square, which everybody will need to have, especially if you're trying to find the pitch of a roof, uh, do siding on the, on the exterior of the house. Uh, you put your, if you want to say you want to do a 512, you'll put 12 down here and then you'll go to 5 because that'll be, you'll rise up 5 inches for every foot that it goes over. So that'll be a 512 pitch, 412, 312, which, etc. So there are many things you can do with this tool. Clearly it's long, it's a long straight edge. Uh, it's very handy to have. Uh, you wouldn't want to bend it. see here standard tool belt this is going to be a speed square this is a smaller tool just like a framing square uh, this is what you'll use say to mark your stud if you're going to be doing some framing or something you want to make a nice clear line it's got this lip on it so you can pull it off and it'll be 90 degrees perpendicular to the stud so that's a very useful tool I use it all the time I mean use it for everything really. It's got angles on it and such that are very helpful. Uh, does anybody know the difference between these two hammers? 
One's clearly bigger. One has kind of a rough head to it. The other one's smooth. Why would you think that would be? It's for grip, technically. Uh, this hammer right here is a framing hammer. This will be used during uh, the framing process of building a house. This is where you don't really care if you hit the wood and it makes it look a little, uh, little graded on the, side, on the top. So uh, you're going to need this. It's a little heavier of a tool. Uh, it'd be, it's a lot easier to hammer a nail with a heavier hammer than it is a light hammer. Uh, this hammer here is a, is a finishing hammer. You'd technically use this if you're doing base trim, uh, situations where you don't want to mess up the surface that you're hammering. Or maybe you just like a lighter hammer. Uh, see here, standard tape measure. Uh, this one is to sixteenths of an inch. That's pretty much all you're going to be, all you'll use in a, in a framing aspect. You're not trying to get exactly precise, but close enough. Uh, and then, of course, sixteen penny nail. Uh, that's going to that's gonna be a standard framing size. You can use 16 penny nail for uh, uh, building normal walls. Um, and this one right here is a 10 penny nail, which you'll use for hammering on OSB onto the exterior of the wall you just built. A little smaller. Uh, you don't need them as big for the, for the OSB. Uh, standard size OSB that goes on the out exterior of the wall will be six, 7 16 inch. Um, a little lighter and uh, for roofing is going to be a half inch roof decking All right. well we got some uh, well this is going to be a very important tool too uh, the level um, I mean as you can see this table is a little bit level it's not bad but uh, you're going to need this to square up your walls before you uh, before you nail them into place, I mean, if your walls are unlevel, then the whole house is going to be messed up. So you don't want to do that. This item right here, does anybody know what this is called? This is considered a hole saw. This is a six-inch hole saw. Uh, basically, just a really big drill bit. But what it does is it'll um, it'll cut out. Obviously, they come in anywhere from one inch to 14 inches, maybe 16 inches, probably bigger. Uh, I've known some that are for use for masonry applications that are upwards of $2,500. They're huge. Um, very important tool if you need to drill a big hole. This one would be used for probably 6 inch PVC going through some sort of exterior wall, uh, maybe uh, for a drain or a, a drain vent or, uh, of course, a, uh, a dryer vent. So. Anything you need a six inch round pipe. Uh, this right here, does anybody know what this little object is? Nail gun. It's a pneumatic nail gun. Uh, this is going to be nice for framing as well. Much quicker. Uh, this countersinks the nail enough. To, it's, it's a little better than hammering. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say that you should never hammer anything because there's certain situations where that's better. But uh, this is quicker, saves time, uh, it joins very well with whatever material it's uh, being hammered into. Um, so yeah, as you can see, uh, that's how you would load one. And uh, you would generally use 110, 115 PSI for this, oiled daily of course, you don't want to mess up your tools. Uh, this right here would be a hammer drill. Um, this is a uh, more high power drill than say this right here. This is just a half inch compact cordless drill. Uh, you can use this for a lot of applications. Um, you would use this for more heavy duty, say you're drilling into concrete, uh, maybe pre-drilling for those Tapcom screws I was talking about. You're going to need this kind of object because it's got more power. It's uh, they call it a hammer drill because it's got sort of a hammering effect and uh, it actually penetrates the material a lot better than a standard drill. So it's, it's better off in 
a lot of situations like that. Like I said, this is a half inch cordless drill, uh, wireless, very mobile. Um, you would use this for most everyday things. And of course, its counterpart here, uh, this is a, uh, an impact drill. Uh, they, they started coming out with these about 10 years ago, really, um, for the general market. Um, it, it, makes, it makes screwing uh, large screws very nice. Uh, anything where you'd like to suck the board up to something else, uh, it, it has sort of a hammer effect, too. Um, it helps out in a lot of situations. So they've become more affordable, like I said, over the past 10 years. And um, I've got one. I know every contractor that I know uses them now. So um, exactly. Uh, this is a seven and a quarter inch, two and a quarter horse circular saw. Uh, this is going to be a very, very valuable tool to your collection. Uh, you can adjust how you want the um, the angle of the blade, say you're doing a 45 degree angle or such, you can adjust that base down there. You can adjust how deep you want your cut, as you can see. So if you're doing, if you're trying to cut through a 716 piece of OSB, you don't need it down there. You can put it up, makes it nicer. The less material that it comes in contact with the blade, the better off you're going to be. And I believe our, uh, our final instrument here, uh, this is called a Sawzall or um, reciprocating saw. This uh, blade that I have on, the, on right now is a wood blade. You would use that for, this is a very imprecise tool. You would not want to use this to, say, cut a sheet of OSB in half. Uh, you would want to use this to, if, you're, uh, if you mess up on a stud or something and you've got to cut the nails out to get out the stud, you can do that with this. Uh, the blade is flexible. You can go in many different areas that you would normally not be able to get a saw. And this other, saw, this other blade that I have with it is a metal saw blade. You see the difference of the saw blades? Metal blade, usually the teeth are a lot smaller. They have ones that are called bimetal. They do wood and metal. So if you're doing that application, like I said, trying to take out a stud or something and you've got it nailed into the bottom plate, you probably want to buy metal or at least a metal blade. So get through those nails. So do we have any uh, questions about any of these objects? Well, like I said, I mean, it just depends on what you're, what you're doing with it. Um, she said, uh, what would be more useful, the wooden or the metal blade? Uh, Generally, I believe that the metal blades, they, um, they kind of do it all for you. Uh, they don't have as big of teeth, so they're not going to be, it's not going to be as aggressive whenever you're using it. But, um, of course, if you're, I mean, if you're going to be doing strictly wood, I would use a wood blade. But uh, if, it, if you're going to have a chance of hitting some nails, hitting some, or some gusset or something, I would probably use a bimetal or metal blade. So that would be a decent idea. Any other ones up here? Do what, man? Safety tools? Well, obviously, you're going to want to be real careful with, say, the, uh, the circular saw. Um, this saw, you don't want to get your hand caught up in it or any of your clothes or such. Uh, this moves back and forth, and it, it'll, it'll, it'll kind of pull you into it. Um, this saw here, it requires a lot of attention while you're using it. You're going to, a lot, of, a lot of the times, you might have to make a plunge cut, which would be me sitting right here and plunging down from, from above, which sometimes you just have to do it. I mean, that's just how it is. So you're going to have to hold this right here. And this saw actually has a very, very small lever in order to use that, which I don't like that design, but I do like, I do like this saw. But most of them will have a flap that goes up to about here, and you can do that. But uh, obviously, just watch your watch your hands on this one because it doesn't it doesn't forgive. <laughs> um, another one you want to be careful about is clearly the nail gun, the pneumatic air, air gun. Um, I've had personal experience with this. One time, I was uh, 
I was nailing corners, and we used to use three corners at the job that I was working. So I had them, um, I, I was holding them all together like this and nailing out. Well, I had one of them toenail up and it went into my finger. <laughs> so you can see how that can happen very easily. I mean, you could be doing it, you could do it a thousand times, and all it takes is the one time. And it's not very enjoyable. As for everything else, I mean, this one's pretty straightforward. If you hit yourself in the hand with this, it's not going to feel good. So, mm -hmm. any other ones? Do what? Maintenance. Um, you're going to want to like, watch, especially pneumatic tools. Uh, every pneumatic tool, you're going to want to oil it daily before you use it. Uh, that's just how it goes. You put a couple drops of oil down in the uh, down where it connects to your air hose. Uh, that's that one. Um, sometimes the heads on these sawzalls they'll get they'll get pretty messed up. Um, what it does, you just turn this, pulls the pin back, you stick this blade in there, and then the blade, the pin goes through it. So, I mean, if you get that if you get that say dirty, muddy, whatever. And that pin won't that pin won't engage, and so that's basically worthless. So you're gonna want to just be careful about that. Uh, these are all mostly um, brush, all brushed motors. I think this possibly is brushless, um, which that will create a spark. Uh, you're gonna want to be careful in a gas situation, maybe methane, maybe. Uh, any other LP gas, something that could arise, you know, that, I mean, it, it will be sparking, so remember that. Um, blades, you're better off to have a new blade on your, on your saws whenever you possibly can. The sharper it is, the better off you're going to be. Uh, it'll cause less friction and, therefore, less effort on your part, maybe less chance of it kicking back and you putting your hand inside of the saw. So, those are all... Decent ideas, like I said. I know you had a question. Yes? No, they sell them uh, generally at Ace. Uh, they'll sell them at uh, any hardware store, really. I mean, they're very, I, I know a lot of times they look menacing and people probably, I don't know, people think you're going to go bash something with it. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, I've done a lot of demo jobs, personally, and I've had, you know, crowbars that tall. I mean, sometimes they're the best for, if you're, especially if you're hooking something, you're going to want to pull out drywall, hook up at the top and pull down. They, help, they work out a lot, so it's a, pretty, it's a pretty useful tool, really, especially in demolition. That's the hardest, I think that's the hardest uh, job that there is in construction is demolition. So, generally, the builder doesn't want it to fall, <laughs> so whenever you're making it fall, it's kind of a pain so any other ones sixteen penny nails well I'll show you uh, how can you use sixteen penny nails to build the wall well Right here, standard technique is using two 16-penny nails per stud. Okay, yeah, they're they're bigger. They're uh, if you're gonna hammer them, they're three and a half inch screws. Uh, I'm not really sure of the gauge. Uh, if you're shooting them, they're three and a quarter inch. So with that nail gun there, they're gonna be considered the same size the same size nail, but they'll be a little smaller. That's just because they countersink so much when you shoot them. So. Well, it's uh, not 16, it's 16 penny, it's, it's yeah, uh, ten, a 10 penny nail will be, they'll be about that big really. They're going to be, I think, are they two and a half inch, Dr. Bobby? I believe they're two and a half inch, um, and those are going to be for uh, nailing the exterior sheathing to the wall. So your 716th OSB, you're not going to need a 16 penny nail in order to fasten that to your studs. So. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you.